Hello there, my name is Sixo, but more on that later as now it's time to bring you a brand new unboxing video. And boy, is this an exciting one. Now, I had originally planned to bring you a regular Toy of the Week video today, uh, but after this arrived on Saturday morning, I just couldn't wait any longer to get cracking with it. It's... <laughs> Earthrise Scorponok. And as you can no doubt see, the box is absolutely redonkulous. I had quite the shock when this arrived, I have to tell you. Now anyway, here's the big bad lad himself, all decked out in Titan form at long last. And I think everyone's been waiting quite a while for this one, particularly after Titan's return Fortress Maximus was released almost exactly four years ago. And that day is finally here. Now, for my part, I should clarify that I don't actually collect Generations toys or indeed Earthrise as a rule, uh, purely on the grounds of space and, well, having to draw the line somewhere anyway. Uh, in fact, it's only the Titan releases that I actually have in my collection, as they're typically souped up enough to at least be on the cusp of working quite well alongside a Masterpiece collection. So with Scorponok, my main interest is seeing how good it looks versus a lot of Masterpiece style toys. And I'm sure we're going to be doing a few comparisons today, to say the least. Uh, inevitably, someone's going to point out that Scorponok is meant to be huge, uh, and so would probably work better with his intended generation scale. But to my mind, it all depends on what you're after for your collection. Now, Scorponok was indeed shown in the original cartoon as being a true titan when he appears right at the end of the very final episode, The Rebirth. Uh, he absolutely towers over the rest of the Autobots and Decepticons, and looks like he'd give Trypticon more than a run for his money as the largest Decepticon ever. He's equally massive in the Japanese series, the Headmasters, although there the character is actually the smaller robot that Western fans may typically think of as Zarek, uh, and he builds himself a lifeless transtector body to merge with. However, despite Scorponok's commonly humongous appearance in the cartoons, there are many of us who most keenly remember him from the Generation 1 comic instead, uh, where he was one of the most compelling characters throughout the entire run, even going on a bit of a hero's journey towards the end. Now, in this continuity, he's still big, but he's certainly not city-sized. In fact, his height goes up and down a little, depending on who's drawing him, but generally speaking, he's roughly twice the height or so of a regular bot, give or take. Anyway, besides everything else, I just really wanted the opportunity to check out this big beast. So with that, let's cut to the quick and get that box open, shall we? Last thing before we begin, Scorponok is available to pre-order from TF Source now and should be in stock very soon. I'll go ahead and put a link to TF Source's listing in today's video description in case you haven't secured your order yet. Moving on to the toy itself, the box is absolutely humongous, as I say. The front has some rather stylish artwork where he's facing off against Earthrise Optimus Prime and the back has a few stock photos of the toy, including how many steps are required to convert him between each mode. Right, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's go ahead and get this box open, shall we? Now, I really can't wait for this. Uh, as I say, I've been waiting very patiently since Saturday morning for it, and uh, figured it was the right thing to do, to do an unboxing video, but it has been tempting to crack it open since then. Right, tape is cut, so here we go. Cardboard in a tray. Oh, it's heavy as well, man, I tell you. I mean, just ridiculous, really, stuff like this. When you see it up close. I have big toys already, but sheesh. Okay, he's coming out feet first. Oops, instructions, get those out of the way. There we go. He's out. Wow, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. Looks great. This looks so good. My God. And just massive. Absolutely massive. That really is a thing, I can tell you. I mean... Yeah, he's big. He's a big old thing. Even without the head on, you can see, I'm sure, just how ginormous this thing is. Uh, and we're going to be going through it all in detail in just a moment. But uh, you know what? It looks like it's absolutely covered um, in like, you know, sort of fabricy, twisty ties and what have you. So let me get it properly out of the, the, the box or get it all cut up and what have you, uh, those twisty ties, uh, and we'll take a proper look at it. So 
Okay, so here he is with all of the twisty ties cut. That's literally all I've just done there off camera. And uh, we're gonna get him out of the box for the first time. And wow, it's just absolutely looks amazing. Honestly, amazing. Even without the head on and, you know, there's obviously a few adjustments and things to do like the feet and then, you know, the guns and a few other bits, but it just looks exceptional. Really, really excited and, and can't wait to check it out properly. Uh, there's also just, you know, a few other bits in the box, like the, you know, part of the tail, um, a few other accessories, some, um, uh, you know, effects parts and what have you just there. But this bit really makes me laugh. I just had to point this out. It's the head in a box, uh, almost a bit Gwyneth Paltrow-esque, I don't know, but uh, oops, there we go. That's the that's the head in the box anyway. So, uh, right, we'll, we'll get him all out on the desk and, and take a proper look at him and go from there, shall we? Right, well, that's him out of the box anyway and all assembled on the desk. And first impressions are that he's just amazing, honestly, like really cool sculpt, really nice detailing. Uh, which you can see immediately as soon as you get them out of the box. Uh, really lovely colours as well. I mean, just stuff like this blue uh, just there just pops really nicely. A lot of these little highlights just there. Um, the green and the purple look great too, obviously. Um, and yeah, just, you know, a ton of fun, quite literally. <laughs> so uh, a bit bowled over by it, but, uh, you know, we'll get there. Um, in terms of accessories, it's got some really cool stuff. I mean, as you'd expect, uh, there is the head just there. Uh, which looks absolutely awesome, uh, can I say. Just really, really nice face sculpt um, for the big guy himself. Uh, lovely rendition. We'll check out the features of that and transform it in just a minute. Um, and of course, you've got the, um, the smaller headmaster just there as well, uh, which comes plugged into to the larger head. Bit of a weird one with this one, because obviously Scorponok traditionally is, um, is a single headmaster, like most headmasters, uh, whereas, you know, obviously Fortress Maximus, his head transforms twice. Uh, you know, you've got Cerebros and then and then the smaller one, which is, you know, typically known as Spike. Um, whereas, you know, Skopanok is, is actually just a single headmaster. But with this one, they've done a, a double thing to kind of bring him up to the same size as Fort Max, as Generations Fort Max, which is really exciting. Uh, you've got his two guns here, just there, which will clip onto his shoulders just there. So we'll do that in just a minute. Uh, he, we've got his um, a bit of his tail section just here, which will go on his backpack. Uh, I've just had a look and it looks like it clips right on. I don't think it'll be coming off again. Uh, so we'll do that in just a second as well. Um, you've got a, uh, his weapon, which is, goes on the size of his arm. Uh, and I just had a quick look and actually there are two bits from the sides of his legs, which look very much like uh, similar bits on the original toy, which were chromed pieces on the G1 toy. Uh, that we'll, we'll see a little bit later. Um, but actually they come off and they form the rest of the shield here and go on the side of his arm. We'll do that in a minute. You've got a couple of effects pieces, so little, uh, you know, blast effects, just like that. So I guess, you know, they just plug together, uh, which are really, really cool, I have to say. And obviously those of you that collect Earthrise and Siege before it will be very familiar with those. Um, and you've got a little uh, plastic uh, red almost like a decoder strip from the Generation 1 toys. I gotta be honest, I got no clue what that's for. Absolutely zero clue. Maybe some of you know if you're more familiar with these kinds of releases, but I don't know. And I don't really care either, <laughs> completely honestly. But that's fine, the, the toy itself looks incredible and that's why I'm here. So yeah, really nice package overall, some really cool accessories. Uh, not a lot going on in the box, um, you know, just the sort of bare minimum, I guess, really what you would expect, but still, it's an awesome package all the same, and I can't wait to get cracking with it. You know, it's interesting, just picking him up and uh, even just, you know, cursory sort of moving him around there, it's interesting how much more solid and stable he feels versus Generations Fortress Maximus, uh, which is a toy that I do like, but I've always kind of felt, um, just felt a bit wonky, you know, when you pick him up, there's a, there's a bit of give and take in, the, in some of the joints, particularly in the legs, around the hips, what have you. Uh, it never really felt particularly solid to me, uh, although I do like the design. Whereas this, you know, immediately when you pick it up, there's just not, I don't know, there's not the same give and take. Uh, yeah, a tiny bit of movement in those legs, but really not to the same degree as, as Max. So I'm, you know, I'm feeling quite pro about that, I have to say. Right, let's get them assembled and posed up and into robot mode. So I had a quick peek at the instructions and, uh, you know, obviously the first thing to do is to turn these claws. Uh, one thing about this toy is that it does have 
rotating claws at the at the um, I guess you'd say at the bicep here. Is that a bicep? I don't even know. Um, you know on this guy, it's a bit hard to tell. But uh, yeah, he's got he's got claw rotation. So I guess it's wrist swivel really for him. Um, but you can move them, which is really cool because some toys. Uh, like the gigantic action one, as we'll see, they, they can't do that. The claws are always kind of twisted uh, one way. Uh, whereas on this guy, you know, you could, there's a lot of posability there right off the bat, as you can no doubt see. Uh, you've also got to move his feet down. Uh, I, I don't know why I see a lot of pictures of people posing it with the feet like this, which is kind of strange because they do flip down like that pretty easily. Um, and that immediately looks 10 times better. So yeah, there you go. That is how they're meant to be. Um, next thing to do will be to clip this thing onto the back, which is going to be part of his tail. So we'll just go ahead and turn him around. Big old beast that he is. You've got this kind of flap on the back here. And that will, I think, oh, hang on. No, it's the other way around. Clips on like that, I think. There we go. Oh, it clips on really easily. And then, Uh, and there's two pegs to peg it in. Very secure. So there you go, that's his backpack. Not really much of one to speak of, but, and actually what there is, is is quite accurate to, you know, to the animation and the comic and whatever else. Looks really good, really solid. I mean, just, even if you're gonna leave this thing in robot mode, <laughs> I don't know, just looks pretty great. Um, you've got his shield weapon, which as I say, can use, these bits off the sides of the legs, but actually you can, if you're not using it and you really want to, you can peg it onto his backpack as well to kind of, this bit does look a bit, um, if I take that off again, this bit does look a little bit hollow just there at the back there, as you can see. Um, you know, maybe that bothers you, maybe it doesn't. It really doesn't me, I have to be honest, but you know, if you're not a fan of that hollow look that you can get on big toys like this, then uh, obviously to save a bit of weight, then you know you can plug that in and it and it covers it a little bit, not completely by any stretch, but a little bit, none the same. All the same. Um, oops, this colour's come out now. Let's put it back in there, there we go. Okay, so then we'll get his guns, these two guns, which obviously in pretty much every depiction, you see him with them pointing like that. Oops, so of a, a diagonal upwards. Um, and they look pretty cool. I have to say, actually, I'm not so keen on that backpacky bit, um, the shield on the back there, just from the, from the front, just because it leaves these two scorpion pincer bits sticking out a little, and to, that's not to my taste, personally. So I'm going to remove it. You can leave it in if you want on your copy. It's just not really to my, to my taste, personally. Uh, and then, of course, you have the head, which I guess, just slots right in. Now they, they don't really show this actually in the instructions, they just kind of start the instructions with it fully formed, so there we go. Now that's really not difficult at all. Just plug straight in, very much like, uh, actually probably easier than Fort Max, to be honest, although that's not difficult, but, um, but yeah, there we go. Uh, wow. Just tilt the leg slightly, make him look a bit more natural. And there he is in his completed robot form. And my word, that looks absolutely immense. I don't know what other word you can use to describe it really, it's just immense. Uh, really, really, really quite something. Uh, beautiful sculpt. The head actually is surprisingly I wouldn't say necessarily even in proportion with the rest of the body, you know, versus like typical humanoid standard, but it, it looks really good. You know, he's got that slightly larger head than, than some of the toys that Scorponok gets. Uh, and it makes such a difference because it automatically looks a lot more like his character model, uh, has to be said. Um, really nice uh, influences in this one. You know, it looks a lot like the cartoon appearance, um, you know, to be honest, kind of equally like the Headmasters, the Japanese version, and like his Rebirth appearance as well. You know, there are traits of both of that. There's definite shades of the toy in there as well, and there's definitely some uh, some comic influence. So I guess, you know, from a masterpiece perspective, if you're a fan of stuff like MP10, this is kind of singing from the same hymn sheet in some ways, in that it's got all of those different influences melded in. You know, it's not the kind of slavish cartoon accuracy that stuff like MP44 uh, convoy is, has got going for it, which, you know, maybe that's your thing. 
Whereas this is a bit, I think anyway, a bit more of a blend of different influences from for Scorpionok um, to kind of make him look, you know, a, a, a bit a bit kind of a blend of though, all of us. Um, but yeah, really, really like him. Um, and, you know, he's got ankle tilt right off the bat. So that's already a big plus for me versus Fortress Maximus, which I, I personally got an upgrade kit for, uh, DNA, a DNA design upgrade kit to, to afford an ankle tilt, but it's still not perfect by any stretch. Um, but this guy, right away, has just got everything you need. Even a little bit of uh, a bit of head movement there as well, which we'll look at. Wow. I'm actually a bit speechless, speechless, to be honest. I'm just kind of taking it in and I don't know. I guess this is what it's like to be six years old again. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Uh, right, so let's um, take a quick look at these shield pieces. So I think, according to the instructions, yeah, those just clip off on the sides. These kind of look similar to, uh, as I say, to the corresponding pieces on the Generation 1 toy which are, are chromed on the original. Here they're just kind of um, painted, oops, and that's gone. Painted gray plastic. There you go, just those two pieces. And I think they just, yeah, they sort of slot together like that. I hope you can see all of this, by the way, I really do. I'm, I'm, this is a new challenge for me to do something this size. I've only just sort of you know, a lot of you may know I've only been doing these videos not so long, just a couple of months. And, uh, you know, there's obviously lots of new challenges with that. This is definitely one of the biggest, quite literally and figuratively. So I hope it's all coming out okay. Right, there we go. That's his shield all assembled there. It kind of looks like a weird, um, I don't know, like a bug or something. I guess it's, you know, a scorpion-esque thing. But, yeah, very strange. Uh, again, there is a corresponding uh, weapon which is just its own piece and on the G1 toy, uh, but it's, it's all grey and it forms the tower in the city mode. Um, and that on here just plugs like that. And uh, yeah, that I, I didn't really check the instructions on how to do that. It's fairly intuitive to be honest. And it looks kind of cool. It's a bit flat, but yeah, it looks nice. Um, but really for me, it's all about the big guy himself. So, okay, things I really like straight away are the orange on the head is really nice and eye-catching looks fantastic uh, I've never really thought about it with the original toy before but there's not a lot of orange in the design um, and that is something that I'm I've, I kind of admit I'm noticing for the first time because I always think of there as being quite a lot of orange on Scorponok but actually other than a few highlights here which are painted the, the predominant amount is is in the um, uh, these bits on the head and it looks great it just adds a nice little pop of color um, and they're quite shiny as well, um, and, and look really, really good. The visor here is just great. I mean, I, just really, really nice. Um, I think it pops open as well, and I don't know how to do that yet, so we'll come to that in just a minute. But that face sculpt in general is a big win for me. Huge, huge win, um, and adds a lot to this toy, uh, definitely. Um, as I said earlier, lots of lovely details. I really like the shape of this um, bit, you know, the main bulk of the body. I think that looks great. Uh, really like the hips as well. They work for me. Um, I've got to be totally honest and say, I, I know a lot of people love it. And look, I've never, um, you know, I've seen it in hand once, but never really had a good go on it with uh, with Titans, uh, with Titan Omega Supreme. But the hips just look a bit odd to me. I can't be completely honest. I, you know, that's not saying nothing. Uh, you know, it's everyone loves that toy and that's great but just something about the appearance of those hips always look a bit odd to me. As I say, I've only seen it in hand once and it was brief, um, but, and this is just way better in my opinion. Uh, anyway, so that's that. Um, but yeah, otherwise it looks really, really good. I was kind of concerned about uh, this gap down here in the feet, um, but actually, you know, that really in hand is kind of a, get down a bit and have a look at it. Yeah, it's really like a non, non problem. Um, honestly, really not a problem at all. Um, I know a few people, I've heard a few comments, people expressing, uh, you know, concerns about will it be stable enough or whatever else. This thing feels very stable, I can tell you right now. I mean, yeah, that's not, I mean, I could, I could topple it over if I really wanted to, but, you know, that's probably more than I'd be willing to do 
for Fortress Maximus, let's put it that way. Um, and the, you know, there's a tiny little bit of wobble there, but it really does feel very stable, particularly with that ankle tilt, that's helping quite a lot as well. Um, so that's great. These guns look fantastic, really nice size um, to them and a good feeling power. So nice paint applications overall. Again, blue down here, that's really cool. These little vent pieces here are done really nicely. Um, so that's cool. Um, yeah, and to be honest, as I, say, as I said earlier, first impression of this robot mode um, and particularly posing it up a little bit is just really, really great. Really, really great. Exactly what I wanted uh, a Scorpionop this size to look like, to be completely honest. Right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, the Headmaster, which you know you may refer to as, as Zarek or Mega Zarek or Scorponok or depends which continuity you're going with. So, um, so off the head comes. Uh, now, as I say, this is really interesting because actually this this guy is a double Headmaster uh, in this case, so a little bit different. So we're just going to go ahead and transform him. Uh, so just a quick flicky through the instructions. Doesn't look too difficult. So the, the top of the head falls down. Uh, just really quickly, it's worth noticing inside here that he's actually got uh, some other eyes in there as well, these green eyes uh, that look really, really cool. So um, can't really display them like that in any way. I think you'd, ha yeah, you'd have to unscrew this red piece um, and take it off just there in order to be able to use the green eyes. I have seen a couple of people doing that online already. Um, but, you know, I, I like the red visor, to be honest, so I shan't be doing that. Uh, flip this bit up. Yeah, okay. Legs fold down. It's pretty straightforward. Up at the shoulders. There we go. Arms fold down. And hands out. Chest down. Click into place. And that's pretty much it. Uh, and then you can, if you want, remove these um, orange pieces antenna and they plug somehow onto his, oops, I'm going to lose one. Uh, oh, there you have to flip them around. That's why I couldn't figure it out. Gonna lose it again. They plug into his backpack. There we go. And there is, oh hang on, these bits fold in as well. Just on the arms. Right, and there is the first headmaster. There we go. Uh, he looks great. Really, really like him. Uh, I'm going to call him. I'm going to call him Mega Zarek. Why not? <laughs> uh, he looks great, and again, uh, really nice articulation on him as well. Just like the, the big guy himself. Um, really nice sculpt. Love this sort of cream color. That's exactly what I associate with um, with the original uh, design. Um, and you know some nice articulation. He's even got ankle tilt, uh, some good movement in the arms just there. Um, and what's really cool, same down there. Uh, what's really really cool is how they've incorporated different bits of the design here. Because uh, as I say, you know the original toy and his uh, Scorponok's fictional depictions, uh, he's a single headmaster. Um, but when he transforms for the headmasters, the Japanese series, this is pretty much how he looks, uh, Mega Zarek who's actually the main character, because the, the giant robot is just a lifeless, um, you know, lifeless thing, trans um, and, and Mega Zarek is the main character, and that's kind of how he looks. Um, but what they've done here, of course, is that they've, you know, um, represented him in this form, but then actually, whoop, his head comes off and transforms as well, and then the smaller headmaster, which I don't know if you can see just there, um, that actually looks much more like Zarek from his uh, Western portrayal in the Rebirth and what have you, and the comic, and a, a little bit like the original toy as well. Um, so there you go, three levels of Headmaster. Makes him a bit more like Fortress Maximus. Um, and actually, I have the original... Stand up. The original Headmaster, just there, G1 Zarek. Uh, who's quite a bit bigger actually than his um, his min little mini counterpart just here. Uh, quite a bit bigger. Can you actually see those at the bottom there? I'll bring them up. There we go. Um, quite a bit bigger. Um, but obviously that toy is smaller overall and, and only has one headmaster. So there you go. Uh, and if I put this guy back in, there you go. You can see the difference between those two. 
quite interesting how they've done it differently, it has to be said. So yeah, really, really like that. Uh, really, really like that. Very clever solution. Uh, and overall, I think, you know, the, the Mega Zarek, the, the bigger robot um, of, of the two headmasters, it looks really, really cool as well. Really nice articulation, what have you. And, uh, and you know, again, better done than, uh, if I'm honest, than, than Cerebros that came with Fortress Maximus. Just, uh, I always liked Fortress Maximus um, and Cerebros as a, as a little robot, but actually this guy is definitely done better. He's got better articulation, what have you. So, yeah, looks really good. Okay, well, now it's time for a few comparisons, uh, which is the bit that, to be honest, I've been really looking forward to, uh, just to see how he shapes up. Um, and again, I've made a bit of extra room today for fitting in a few other toys, which has been a bit of a challenge, but hopefully it'll be worth it. So here he is with the original Scorponok, G1 Scorponok. Uh, there you go, you can see quite a size difference between those two. I mean, it, it's always interesting because the original Scorponok was actually absolutely dwarfed by his counterpart, Fortress Maximus, G1 Fortress Maximus, which I do also have, but uh, man, yeah, he's downstairs at the moment. Um, but uh, yeah, there, there's quite a size difference between the two of them. Um, whereas obviously they've upscaled the, uh, the new version to, to be almost the same size, not quite, but almost, uh, but we'll see in just a minute. But yeah, they look really, really great together. And there's definitely a bit of um, toy influence from this guy here as well, for sure. Um, really, really good. I love this toy, by the way. So it's just a dream to see it uh, sort of upgraded. Or, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say upgraded, but, you know, brought back to life. Next up, we have MP44, which, you know, same size as MP10 if you've, if you've not got MP44, so that kind of gives you a good indication. Um, and again, wow, quite the size difference between them. So, you know, if you were doubting if this would work, Earthrise Scorponok in Masterpiece scale, I mean, it depends how you feel about that, I guess. Uh, it's quite a good indication because still Optimus looks really quite small uh, by comparison. Not as small as Earthrise, of course, but, um, you know, quite a big difference between those two size-wise. Uh, I'm liking that, I have to say. <laughs> I think that looks great. Really into that. Bear with me whilst I do these transitions. Next up we have Fans Toys Sovereign, which is the closest thing, uh, or certainly one of the closest things that we've had to a masterpiece Galvatron so far, uh, failing the, you know, the absence of the real thing. Uh, Fans Toys have, have brought us this guy. This is the M version for anybody that's wondering. I think that just looks great. I, again, you know, I'm really blown away by that. I always kind of associate these two characters together, um, not only because of, you know, they obviously appear together in the Rebirth, but they they have quite a, a memorable fight in the comic as well. Um, so I was kind of, you know, remember that to some extent. And that looks really, really cool. Really like that. Works for me on a few in a few ways. Uh, okay, let's bring up something slightly bigger. This will be quite a big test for a lot of people, I'm sure. This is Fans Hobby Power Baser, um, which, you know, is actually a representation of Master Force uh, Jinrai, uh, or God Jinrai, I should say. But you can get a kit for this guy, which I do have, to make him look more like Marvel Comic Prime as well, Optimus Prime, uh, Power Master Optimus Prime. And uh, I do have that kit, but I, I prefer to, uh, to be honest, I, I prefer him typically representing Jinrai uh, on my shelf. That's how he works for me best. Um, but, you know, size-wise, comparison-wise, I guess, it, you know, from a purely Marvel perspective, um, Scorponok is too large, probably, <laughs> of those two. But still, it looks good. I mean, I like it. Um, you know, I, scale is one of those things for me that, is important and it's not. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it makes a big difference when it works. Uh, sometimes with toys like this, you know, you've just got to kind of go with it a little bit as well and use your imagination. Um, so yeah, but I think they look pretty good together all the same. Next up, we've got a couple of characters in masterpiece size from the Rebirth. We have, if I can get them to stand, So there we go. Don't want things to fall over. Last one. There we go. So we have um, 
masterpiece, uh, Target Master Hot Rod, actually, the, uh, the second version uh, with the ACOM inspired colors from, from the Rebirth. Uh, we have Fans Toys Coot, uh, which is, you know, cup. Uh, and we have Fans Toys Rouge as well, which is their take on RC. Um, and again, that gives you some indication. Uh, all of these characters featured in the Rebirth uh, alongside Scorponok. So it gives you some indication anyway of how that looks. Um, and again, you know, the, the, obviously all of them, particularly Hot Rod, are a masterpiece car bot size. Um, so same size as stuff like Prowl, what have you. So that gives you a good idea uh, of how they scale. We have a few more comparisons to do. So we're going to put in next to a few more third party figures. This is Fans Toys. Mind Wipe, um, well, Fans Toys um, Dracula and Fans Toys Lupus, which is their Mind Wipe and Weird Wolf. Um, obviously, two Decepticon headmasters right there, um, who's, you know, their boss is Scorponok in, in pretty much any continuity that you can think of. Um, I think that looks great. I mean, let's be honest, chances are Fans Toys will do their own Scorponok at some point, right? Like, we're all expecting that. Um, the fact that they haven't announced it yet is a bit of a surprise, if anything, given that they have announced their own Fortress Maximus, which is, I mean, the, the size of that thing is just ridiculous. So um, assuming that they're going to make a, a Scorponok to the same scale as Fortress Maximus, in which case, I mean, it's going to be well over twice the size of this thing. Well, I mean, probably three or four times the size. I, I can't even really, to this day, picture how large Fans Toys Fort Max is going to be, but I guess that um, it's going to dwarf all of this. This is it's going to be a different scale of conversation and everything. Um, but for today, anyway, you know, working with these guys, I think that looks really, really good, I have to say. Uh, really like that. And that was, a, that was a big part of the test for me. That was a big part of the test. So I'm pleased. I'm pleased. Um, and we actually have, of course, Fans Toys aren't the only people to make Masterpiece-style headmasters so far. Uh, KFC have thrown their hat in the ring with a couple of characters. This is their uh, Kingzilla, uh, and they've made King Gorilla as well, um, which we'll look at in, uh, in beast mode in a minute. Um, but yeah, here, here's Kingzilla for now, and again, that scales really nicely. Um, so different companies all coming together, uh, all looking pretty good, I would say. Um, but there are more. Because they're Autobots, but you also have Make Toys getting in on the action with their headmasters. Uh, this is obviously their uh, Capola or Chrome Dome, just there, and Iron Will, their hard head. Um, when are they going to finish this set? Please <laughs> bring us Make Toys Brainstorm and Highbrow, please. Uh, obviously, Make Toys have had uh, you know, a bit of difficulty along the way. They're hopefully getting back on track now. Um, and no announcements yet if they're actually going to follow through and finish off their headmasters. But man, I would, I would uh, be a happy bunny if that happened, let me tell you. Um, and obviously Fans Toys have, have yet to finish off their set of Decepticons as well with, with Chomp, uh, which seems to be taking a long time, but I'm sure it'll be along before too long. So, so yeah, for me, for my money, that's working really nicely. Have to say, like it. Kind of what I expected in terms of scale. I'm sure people will quibble and say that, you know, Scorpionop should be taller or smaller, depending on your preference, but it works for me. I'm going to bring in now the original Generation 1 Scorpionop. So we've seen that one already, but let's bring this one in. So this guy is... Gigantic Action, which is a really interesting toy um, because it's actually an officially licensed product. Um, it's not made by Hasbro or Takara, um, but it is officially licensed, hence it's got a Decepticon logo right there on the chest. Um, and it's it's non-transforming. Um, it's kind of you know a massive uh, action master, if you will. Uh, highly posable, really, really posable, uh, although it doesn't have the same sort of waist swivel uh, here, uh, which you know I've seen a few grumbles about. Um, that the Earthrise toy does have. Um, and for now, you know, that, that for a good while anyway, this has been on my shelf um, filling in against the Decepticon, you know, the fans' toys, headmasters, what have you. 
Uh, and that may be up for debate now. You know, I need to decide what I'm going to do with this guy because I really like this toy a lot. And I have the Black Zarek version too, uh, and it, it's immense. I mean, I think, you know, no surprise. It certainly wouldn't be a surprise if we get a Black Zarek version of this guy as well. I think it's almost an inevitability, uh, particularly with some of the functionality that they've shown off. Um, you know, the, with the that he's going to, you know, obviously have a spear and what have you. Um, definitely, definitely going to get a Black Zarek. <laughs> that guy, it's going to happen. Um, uh, but yeah, this guy, uh, very stylized as well. So they do different things. Uh, and I think that's ultimately for me, why I felt that, um, it was still worth going in on Earthrise Scorponok, um, just because style wise, he, he does look a little bit more like what I would expect from the character, even though I do like this look too. Um, but yeah, three different, three Scorponoks. Why not? There you go. Right. We've got a few more comparisons to do. We're going to do some big toys now, big toys. So, first up we have a not Titan Devastator, who's not as large as this guy, but I thought it'd be interesting to see Toy World Constructor, um, you know, which is one of the, uh, the largest combiners that I, I can think of. Um, you know, and you've also got like Zeta, Bruticus and Superior and what have you that stand at this same scale or all to that same height. So I just thought it'd be interesting to see how they look versus Scorponok. Um, and Scorponok's still taller, definitely taller, but you know, Constructor's giving him a run for his money, it's fair to say. Right, so we have another Titan to compare him with. This is Trypticon. Titan class trip to come uh, that you can see just here. Um, and it's really interesting to see these two together because firstly, uh, Tripticon is smaller quite considerably, uh, at least in terms of sheer height. Obviously he's not, um, you know, standing as upright uh, given his, his, you know, he's a dinosaur. Um, but yeah, there does feel to be a bit of a size difference between them. Um, also interesting is the style difference in that, uh, you know, this guy has a lot more molded uh, kind of greebly detail all over him, you know, like really intricate molding, uh, molded detail. Um, I presume in an effort to make him look vast, you know, to make him seem like more of a city, uh, massive city bot. Uh, whereas actually Earthrise Scorponok, you know, does have that to some extent, but it's pared back a, a little bit. It's not quite as pronounced. Um, so it does make them look stylistically a tiny bit different, but they work very well alongside each other as well. I think would be um, so yeah, there you go. That was the last, well, the last big city bot that we got. Final comparison for the day. We would be missing out, wouldn't we, if we didn't take a look at these two together. So of course this is Generations, uh, Fort Max, Legends Fort Max actually, uh, I should say. Just going to uh, zoom out a tiny bit just to fit him in, because he is quite big, uh, noticeably bigger than Scorponok, it's fair to say. So yeah, this is the, the Takara Tomy version of, of Fortress Maximus, in case you're wondering about the colours. Um, I opted for that one because I think they, they really knocked it out of the park in terms of the colour scheme they did for this guy. Um, much more cartoon accurate, clearly they were looking to bring uh, the Headmaster's cartoon to life and they did that really nicely. Uh, yeah, again, I've got a, an upgrade kit installed on this guy here, um, with uh, the feet particularly, so that you can out his legs a little bit and, and get a bit of ankle tilt going on. It's kind of a, a, a fake piece, as it were, fake feet almost, to kind of give him that look of the, the appearance of ankle tilt, even if not the actuality. Um, and uh, there's a couple of other upgrade pit bits on there as well. Um, but yeah, that should give you a good indication of these two in that scale. I think it looks really, really good. That's pretty much what I'm going for. To be honest, that's for me in terms of display and what have you. That's that's it for me. Um, and so you know, in my mind, yes, that works pretty nicely at masterpiece scale. It's not correct, you know, quote unquote, in the in the strictest sense. In that, yes, he should probably be bigger or smaller or whatever, depending on your preference. But still, it, it looks awesome all the same. So yeah, I'm really happy. I've got to say, in terms of the scale of these toys. Uh, with each other. I think it looks great. So, um, you know, overall, 
impressions of the robot mode too are just that it's immense. As I said earlier, immense is probably the right word for it. Um, just really, really good fun, really chunky, solid, nicely built, looks great, great paint applications. Uh, you know, a couple of quirks with things like the knees and what have you, but hey, it really it pales uh, in, into insignificance, really, in the grand scheme of it all, because it's, it's just such a presence. Now it's time to go through transformation. Uh, now, as with my recent Fans Hobby Athena video, I'm going to speed up the transformation for this video to keep things moving. Uh, but I will publish it separately at normal speed, so if you really want to see it in detail, you can. Here we go! So here's Scorponok in his beast mode, in his scorpion mode. Um, and wow, it looks really, really good. Gotta say, it looks really, really immense. Uh, probably the best scorpion mode on any Scorponok toy I've seen. Um, you know, there have obviously not been that many, but, but yeah, this looks just from first impressions wise, it looks really, really solid um, and really nicely designed. Good proportions as well. Uh, so yeah, there you go. There it is from the side. Um, so yeah, looks really good with the tail here. I'll go through some of what I learned from transformation in just a minute. From the other side, identical, but still worth seeing. And then you can see just there from the front as well. So yeah, I, I, as I say, I think it looks really, really cool. Um, a couple of bits from the transformation. Uh, first thing to note is that it's exceptionally easy, really, really easy. I mean, honestly, you could do it in five minutes, no more. Um, no real, you know, no real uh, surprises along the way. Nothing that really stood out as, as being a bit unusual. Um, very similar to the G1 toy in a lot of regards, um, with, you know, some possible exceptions. I mean, these feet, uh, these legs, scorpion legs, still weigh a lot e uh, better in robot mode than the, the original toy. Um, and, and the legs have a little bit more complexity than you may expect, but essentially they are just folding over and sitting on top of, uh, of the body here. Um, but there's a little bit with a few panels and stuff, these panels on the side um, and the way they fold in. Um, but you can watch, as I say, the, the whole transformation video separately to this if you want to see it in detail. Um, and uh, there's just, you know, kind of a lot of great detail on this guy as well. I mean, he just looks really, really good. Um, one thing, the tail, this tip of the tail piece doesn't feel like it's very secure. Uh, it was actually untabbed straight out of the box on mine. So initially I was, I was thinking that, you know, something had gone wrong or what have you. Um, it does tab in and actually if you pinch it just from the sides there, uh, it feels a bit more secure. But I feel like that's something, yeah, there you go, it's gone again. Like it just pops out quite easily. So that feels a little bit flimsy to be completely honest. Uh, I feel like that's something I'm probably going to be doing quite a few times. Uh, I'll put it in upside down now. But I feel like that's going to be happening quite a few times. Uh, it pops back in easily enough though, so not a major problem. There is, uh, I'm just going to show you from the top if I can. There we go. Uh, there is a bit of a visual gap here. That's not great. It doesn't look great. There's quite a big gap there. Um, big hole uh, just kind of gaping through. I'm almost tempted to see I'm going to untab that. Yeah, so what you could do, and what I may end up doing, is actually leaving that bit slightly mistransformed. Hang on, get that picked in. Again, there we go. So this panel, they tell you to fold it all the way, all the way down to sit flush with the body. Uh, well, sorry, with the rest of the tail, but actually I think it looks better like that because it does curve up nicely, so even if you're moving this bit of the tail, it can move with it. So just right off the bat, I'm thinking to just leave it like that. Um, and yes, it looks a bit more like a ramp, which is, you know, what it turns into in the city mode, of course. Um, but, you know, I, I think it just, it, it hides that that hole otherwise that um, that you get in the middle of the, the tail in the scorpion mode. So I think that looks a little bit better. So maybe I'll, I'll leave it like that for now anyway. Uh, that's not how it's meant to look according to the instructions, but I'll leave it like that and, and see how we get on with it. 
Um, what else to tell you? I mean, it, it's a big old thing, honestly. <laughs> Looking at it, and I keep kind of chuckling to myself just because it's so immense. Um, the guns look really cool in this mode as well. Uh, you know, on the G1 toy, there's a second set of guns that sit on top of the legs. That doesn't happen here. There is just the one set of guns uh, that, that obviously come off and get repositioned here because they're on the other side of the arms in the, other in the robot mode. Uh, the claws obviously have the same functionality as they do in the robot mode. Um, and work really well here. The legs are, I mean, if, if you're basing this on the, your experience with the G1 toy, if you're familiar with the G1 toy and that's what you're comparing this to, the legs do not move in the same way that they have, the, I should say, the motorized function that the G1 toy has. You know, the G1 toy has a set of wheels on the bottom of the body that when you roll them along, the legs kind of rattle and move. That does not happen here, um, but I really don't miss it, I have to say. Um, it's the feature I never particularly cared about, even as a kid. Um, but the legs all move independently of each other. They've got, um, oh no, I say that. Okay, so I say that I'm wrong. The, f the front two and the back two legs are separate. So, so the front two legs are connected like that and the, the back two legs are connected like that. But then these uh, lower leg pieces are all independent of each other. Uh, sorry, I just realized my hand's in the way whilst I'm talking. So the, the front, these two legs here are on one solid piece uh, and move together, and these legs move together as well. But then the actual lower legs are all independent, and there's kind of the, the, the sort of very tip there. Uh, I was about to say toes, I guess that's probably not anatomically the correct thing to say about scorpions, but uh, they move separately as well. So there's quite a bit of articulation there in the scorpion legs. Um, but yeah, overall, really, really like it. And again, you know, comparing it to something like the, the um, gigantic action toy, which I love very much as a, as a robot form, but obviously the fact that it doesn't transform, uh, this was a big selling point for me, this Scorpion mode um, on this guy. So really, really like it. Uh, so yeah, looks cool. Let's do a quick comparison. And I've talked about it a little bit, the Scorpion mode on the original toy, but there you go. You can see them both together. Uh, um, but yeah, really nice. They look great together, actually. Really complement each other nicely. Uh, I mean, there's some lovely chrome on the original toy that I really, really like that the, the new toy is missing. Uh, actually, the, just noticing the purple on the original toy is a bit more vibrant, um, although the green is very similar, uh, which is interesting, and the orange. Uh, but yeah, certainly the purple is more vibrant on the original toy than the, uh, the new one. Um, but they look great together. Really, really like that. And then, just in case you want to see it, I mean, you've seen them already, but here's Masterpiece Hot Rod, Target Master version, that, you know, if you're worth contemplating this for a Masterpiece display, that's what you'd be getting. And to my eye, that works really nicely, I've got to say. Uh, you know, I think there'll be a lot of people, Masterpiece collectors, that'll be weighing this guy up for their collection it works. In my opinion, it works. It won't be for everyone. There will be some people that will be waiting to see what fans toys do or what have you. But let's be honest, that's going to be years away. Even if they reveal it tomorrow, it's still going to be years away. So, you know, this guy, for the price the point that he's at, the amount of fun that he's at, just do yourself a favor, <laughs> I think. Uh, so, yeah, that looks really nice, in my opinion. And then... I thought it'd be interesting to see, just quickly, what he looks like with someone like KFC King Gorilla. We've seen Kingzilla. Now this is King Gorilla, which is KFC's take on a masterpiece-styled ape face. Uh, interesting toy, not perfect, but you know, fun. Certainly a fun toy. Uh, I actually just picked him up again. I had it test shot of it originally and liked it um, but um, uh, but yeah sold him on again and uh, and then you know just realized that actually I completely missed him and, and now he's back um, but yeah that again to me that looks really really good uh, in terms of Decepticon Headmasters Beast Modes what have you I will do some more uh, picture comparisons of course of these guys I'll take loads of photos of Arthritis uh, Scorponok I'm sure uh, and fully plan on doing a lot of photo comparisons as well uh, posing him up with different masterpiece style toys so you can see what that looks like. Um, but yeah, just interesting to get a quick comparison for today anyway. So first impressions on the beast mode, 
are that it's really, really good. Really like it. Uh, very simple transformation between the two. Um, but, you know, that doesn't matter. That's fine. It doesn't need to be complicated at all. Um, but the, the Scorpion mode does exactly what it needs to um, and just looks, again, I keep saying it, but it looks immense. Let's be honest, it just looks absolutely immense um, and carries over really nicely from the robot mode. Great job. Right, well, final thoughts from me on Earthrise Scorpionock. Um, I think it's great, honestly. What a really fantastic package. Um, definitely a better, well-rounded toy, more well-rounded toy than Fortress Maximus, in my opinion. Uh, I, I like Fort Max. Um, I think the two other modes are a bit dubious, um, and the, the robot mode has some faults and is a little bit wonky, um, although it looks really nice. This guy, uh, you know, just feels very solid and chunky and stable and poses nicely. Um, in his robot mode and the scorpion mode looks ace really really cool and in a way that I never transform max But I will transform this so right at the back for me. It's a better toy um, I, I haven't checked out the base mode on this guy and to be honest. I'm not going to today uh, I'm gonna call it quits with the two um, You know, let's be honest. There are many many videos out there or will be of the, uh, the the base mode as well, if you want to check that out. Um, personally, it's not my my jam, and that's really just because I you know I don't obviously have a lot of like Earthrise figures, what have you. I'm going for more of a masterpiece uh, lineup. So in that regard, the the base mode is of, of little use to me. But from what I've seen, it does look cool. It's fair to say. Um, but yeah, from the two modes that I've I've checked out and that I'm interested in, I think they've done a really really good job. It has to be said. Uh, lots of nice little features. I think the articulation on the robot mode is generally pretty good. Um, you know, the, there's a couple of uh, things like the ankle tilt and the waist swivel that make a huge difference and really just again just put him above Fort Ma Fortress Maximus in my opinion. Um, and and everything feels solid and chunky and well made, so that's good. Uh, the Zarek Mega Zarek Headmaster. Uh, is very cool. Really like that as well. And they definitely made the right decision in terms of, um, you know, upping him to a double headmaster. Uh, that is a, just a great solution in my book. Really, really like it. And the best of all worlds, really. It's a, it, it's a wonderful solution. Um, so, yeah, I, I think overall, uh, can't recommend him enough. And I think for the price point that he's at, it's not the cheapest toy by any means, but you know, you get a lot of bang for your buck, it's fair to say. So uh, if you're on the fence and not sure, my advice would be give it a go and see what you think. So yeah, really, really good. So that's Earthrise Scorponok. What a beast. Thanks again for watching today. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out my other videos whilst you're at it. Quick final shout out to everyone who already supports me on Patreon. Details are coming up at the end of the video in just a moment. Otherwise, that's it from me. So enjoy the rest of your day, TTFN.